What's up everybody? My name is Killswitch. Welcome back to Surgery Squad. Uh, I had so much fun last time. Thought we'd do it again. <laughs> We're gonna do some wisdom teeth today. Let's see what happens when you're knocked out getting your teeth yanked out. I also fixed the audio, so I should be able to be heard this time. <laughs> Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual erupted wisdom tooth extraction. Wait, I'm Dr. Jeff, erupted? and I'll be walking you through this procedure Ew. today. A wisdom tooth extraction is a surgical procedure in which an oral surgeon or dentist removes one or more of your third molars, commonly known as wisdom teeth. For some reason. Most of us have to have our wisdom teeth removed due to chronic pain or discomfort, periodontal disease, or an increased risk of damage to the adjacent teeth. Some dentists and oral surgeons may also suggest that you have your wisdom teeth removed as a preventative measure even if they're not currently causing you any problems. Yeah, it seems to be a normal thing. Our patient today is having their lower right wisdom tooth removed, or, as a dental professional may refer to it as, tooth number 32. Ah, oh, well that's boring. Wisdom Before we begin, so much let's get some x-rays taken of our patient's teeth. X-rays? X-rays, or radiographs, are essential, low-cost diagnostic tools used to examine a tooth's roots, check the health of the bone surrounding the tooth, observe the status of developing teeth, and locate abnormalities. Let's right. get started. First, insert a positioner into the patient's mouth. Oh, I hate these things. Whenever I go to the dentist and I get these Next, things in there. Next, position Ugh. the x-ray cylinder where indicated. Let's see. Just show With the, the x-ray cylinder in place, jaw. we need to get behind our radiation barrier to reduce the amount of radiation we're being exposed to. Understandable. And take the picture. Don't Forget worry, her. a lead apron will protect our patient from any <laughs> unnecessary radiation exposure. Those I lead couldn't have done it better myself. I love those. I'll have my assistant finish up the rest of the x-rays, and I, then I I was review the resulting images. Dr. Jeff, what is this betrayal? Well, everything appears to be normal with the wisdom tooth's roots. And now that all of the x-rays have been completed, we can extract our patient's wisdom tooth. Perfect. The two most common wisdom teeth extractions are for an impacted wisdom here? tooth or an Whoa, erupted wisdom tooth. What Patients that have two or more wisdom teeth it's extracted sideways, or have like, impacted wisdom teeth may choose to receive a right. general Jeez. anesthetic. When a patient has an impacted tooth removed, the procedure is referred to as a surgical extraction. Our patient today is only having one erupted wisdom tooth removed and has elected to go with a local anesthetic. Oh, To begin, okay. You'll need to apply a topical numbing gel to the anesthetic injection site. This will help decrease any pain the needle may cause. A numbing gel. Ew. Oh, that's quite a sound Next, there. Next, we can Ew. inject the local anesthetic. The patient may feel a slight pinch as the needle is inserted. Here, let me show After the that, the area gums. will become numb for a few hours. A slight pinch. It always hurts more than that. Oh yeah, look at the tongue just... Uh. And now we'll give our patient a few minutes to become completely numb. Lidocaine. Great, the patient's mouth is numb, and now we can move on to removing the wisdom tooth. Perfect. First, you'll need to loosen the periodontal ligament and elevate the tooth using a dental elevator. So this is what happened. <laughs> Using the dental forceps, Ooh. rip and rotate the tooth in a clockwise rocking motion Ro until it's loosened rotate and removed. It? Just gonna spin it around? Now clean the area using a surgical suction. Oh, this will okay. allow us to check the area for any bony matter or tooth structure that I may kinda, be left in the socket. I kind of figured it would be a little more elegant than just pop it up and yank it out. Uh, but clearly I was wrong. Let's give you some water right there on that open wound you got. And all over the rest of you. Oh, you wanted water? Too bad, we're taking it back. Everything looks great, but we're not done yet. No? Our patient needs to slowly bite down on some gauze for a few minutes 
to allow the socket to properly form a clot. So we're all, I was knocked out when I did my wisdom teeth. At least for two of them. She's Since just, the patient is clotting properly, she just we can gets go ahead and injections place some fresh and she's gauze in their mouth. Here, have when some getting more. wisdom teeth removed, it's important to remember that everyone recovers at different speeds. The rate of your recovery depends on a number of factors, including the complexity of the extraction, your age, and your individual recovery capacity. My family Often, tends patients to will opt recover to have their surgery well on a pain, Thursday so was, or Friday, so they're able like to return to work on the fine. following Monday. After the surgery, the oral surgeon or dentist will provide some information tips that may help speed up your recovery. But, These tips may include using an ice pack on the... Shut up, Dr. Jeff. <laughs> I, I'm surprised she doesn't get stitches, because I got stitches when I got my wisdom teeth out. Hmm. I guess it really wasn't worth pausing Outside Dr. Outside of Jeff the for. cheek for the Apologize. first 24 hours to reduce swelling. Refraining from physical activity for the first few days. Avoiding sodas and the use of a straw. Ooh, but the carbonation feels so good And gently rinsing your mouth out with warm salt water the stitches. to help relieve pain after the first 24 hours. I was never told to avoid soda. It's also suggested that patients do not smoke for at least 24 hours yeah. after their Ooh, surgery. That sucks for people who smoke. Smoking may not only delay healing, but it will also reduce the blood supply and could introduce germs and contaminants to the surgery area. Hmm. The more you and know. And that's a wisdom tooth extraction. You did great. If you're up Thank to it, you. why not try another procedure on surgerysquad.com? So here's a little fun fact about Kill Switch. When I got my wisdom teeth extracted for the first time, my, I think it was my lower ones, uh, I was not knocked out, but I did get the, the injections, like the numbing injection, and one of them wore off. Like, you, my dentist got done with one half of my mouth. This side wore off, the numbing wore off, but nobody knew until, you know, the dentist went in there and started drilling, and it sucked. It hurt so bad. So he fa found out when I started kind of mumble screaming, like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and so he, I did get another inject, a numbing injection in there, but oh, that, that was some of the worst pain. Okay, what should we do next? Virtual... Should we try... Should we try a dental crown? Okay, start. Let's go. I love that loading, loading screen, that loading bar, or whatever you want to call it. Welcome to Surgery oh, Squad's it's my boy virtual again. dental crown. I'm Dr. It's Jeff, dude. and I'll be assisting you with this procedure today. <laughs> my virtual surgeon. A dental crown is a tooth-shaped cap that is used not only to Ugh, restore the strength dude, and functionality bro. of a tooth, what that happened? can also improve its overall appearance. What you got going over here, too? Before we begin, right. let's review the types of crowns used in dentistry. First up, temporary crowns. Temporary crowns are placed over a patient's tooth while they wait for their permanent crown. They're usually prefabricated How long does that and made happen? of plastic or stainless steel. Ooh. A patient's permanent crown can be all metal, Do they porcelain fused to metal, all porcelain, or all ceramic. Ooh, wow. Each with their own advantages and disadvantages. That looks Click gross. on the different uh, types of like crowns to learn more about them. When you're ready to move on, click the continue button. All right. Our patient came in today with a broken tooth, Buddy, courtesy of you a freak softball dude, just accident, everything... and we That's get the rewarding <laughs> task of placing a crown in. If you haven't noticed oh! already, it's one of their lower front teeth, tooth 23. Okay. Let's review what 32, we're going to do today. Which I remember from the wisdom tooth. To begin, happened like we'll numb the tooth, ago. <laughs> then shape it, take impressions for our dental lab, place a temporary crown, and determine the shade of the tooth. All right. When our patient returns for their next appointment, we'll place their permanent crown. Now, let's put on our gloves and get down to business. Yep, let me just put on my gloves First, that I absolutely place have. place some topical twice, numbing apparently. gel on the injection site. This will alleviate any pain or discomfort the needle may cause. Ah, uh, yes, our little gel again. I guess there's not, like, much else you can do. This is such a sensitive area. Now we area. need to inject the local anesthetic. After it has taken effect, the area around the tooth and the patient's lower lip should be numb for a few hours. 
That's Inject always a fun the local feeling. anesthetic into the patient's gums. Just Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Dr. Jeff. It did not Let's mean to wait a few you. minutes to allow the anesthetic so to eager. set in. Now that the area has become completely numb, we can move on to preparing the tooth. To begin, we'll reduce the size of the tooth, cutting it away from the adjacent teeth. Go ahead, give it a try. Ugh. I always hated this feeling in the dentist when I could feel him like, or the orthodontist when you could feel him drilling away at your teeth. Ooh, uh, I hate that feeling. Ooh. I don't care how numb your mouth is, you can still feel it and you can smell it and you can hear it and you can imagine what's going on. Ooh, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good, but we need to create a more tapered top to the tooth. This tapered will allow for a more tooth. comfortable Very nice and exact fit for both the temporary and permanent crowns. Use the handpiece to taper the tooth. That's what it's called, a handpiece? Buddy, you about to have a very sharp tooth. Bro. Yeah. We're making him a third canine, that's third, the fifth canine here. Look at that. That'll do. Now that the tooth has been shaped, we'll need to take impressions of our patient's teeth. This is done by placing impression trays into the mouth and having the patient bite down on them. That looks These real trays are feet. filled with a putty-like substance that is generally referred to as impression material. <laughs> the impression material is used to create a plaster cast and is then sent to our dental lab where a dental technician will make the patient's permanent crown. A dental lab? That Go sounds ahead so and fancy. make the impressions of our patient's teeth. When you're done, I'll have my dental assistant create the plaster cast and send it to the lab where the magic happens. All right, John. Bite down, please. Excellent work. Thank you. My dental assistant just informed me that our patient would like an all porcelain crown on the tooth. So before we can more. finish up with them for the day, we need to determine the shade of porcelain that resembles their natural teeth. Can you handle this? Oh, hi. Hi, Beanie. I can do this, yes. <laughs> Hold on, let me get my cat. There we go. Uh, I'd say it's this one. That looks like a match. Aha! The See last good item on today's agenda is to place the temporary crown. The temporary crowns that we use are prefabricated and made of plastic. I've already lined the inside of the crown with the temporary cement. Oh, nice. So go ahead and place it on the prepared tooth. Whoa, that does. It looks like. All right. I thought it was Since upside down. Since it's only a temporary oh, nope. crown. There are some guidelines our patient will need to be aware of before they go. They need to avoid sticky and hard foods. Try not to chew using the temporary crown and steer clear of flossing on suck. either side of the temporary crown. By flossing oh. around the temporary crown, our patient may unintentionally pull the crown off the tooth. You gonna do some surgery well, with me? Well, we've done all we can do today. Our patient will need the to come back in a week to, to have their permanent crown placed. One week later. Welcome back. Can't do that. Our patient has returned and is ready to have their permanent crown. He looks crown so much put happier. On. Begin by using the dental hemostat to remove the temporary crown that we placed on the tooth last week. There we go. Hey, let me just pull that off. I didn't expect it to creak. Ew. Now what is, use the explorer to remove any excess temporary cement and debris. Yeah, I'll just pop that right off. Oh, just kidding. We're gonna scratch it off. Does that I've not hurt the enamel? The I always the color of that. the permanent crown. I guess probably not. We wouldn't great. use it. I've applied cement on the inside of the crown, so it's ready for you to place. Thank you. Oh, look at that! It matches your other teeth so well. Perfect. After the cement has hardened, the dentist would check the fit of the crown again and the patient's bite to ensure that there are no issues. You are making Luckily for our patient, you did a marvelous job. 
After placing the permanent crown, our patient may notice some mild sensitivity for the first hour. Yeah. I, Their dentist will that's also it? offer them some post case recommendations to follow before they leave. I expected it to last. This includes than that. waiting at least an hour before having anything to eat or drink and waiting 24 hours before enjoying their favorite sticky or chewy foods. All right. If our patient has any pain That's or sensitivity when they bite down, they should contact their dentist immediately. This may indicate that the crown is too high on the tooth and needs to be adjusted. Most dental crowns last anywhere between 5 and 15 years, wow, depending on a, normal wear and tear, quite a span. oral hygiene habits, and other behaviors, such as teeth grinding, chewing ice, or biting your fingernails. Ooh, who chews on ice? Ooh. Well, I hope you've enjoyed placing a dental crown. <laughs> Maybe cold. you should consider a career in dentistry. While you're at it, Maybe I check out other great surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. Well, this looks disgusting. Let's do this. Hello. Hey, and he's just recommending school. all of his own surgeries. We haven't seen Susie once Jeff, today. <laughs> and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. An ingrown toenail happens when the edge of the toenail grows down and into the flesh of the toe. Ew. When this occurs, there is usually a minor <laughs> what is pain, going on here? and swelling oh. around the toenail. An ingrown toenail is usually caused when extra pressure is applied to the toe. I wasn't expecting to a close up of tight or feet today. And properly trimmed toenails foot or toe deformities, injuries, and fungal issues can also be contributing factors. <laughs> there Maybe are some ways to idea. treat an ingrown toenail at home to relieve some of the pain. But remember that you should never attempt to remove an ingrown toenail yourself. Well, <laughs> If you're a diabetic and have an ingrown toenail, it is recommended that you go to the doctor immediately. Yeah. Now that you understand the causes I of an ingrown to toenail, up. let's put on our gloves and remove one. Our patient is ready. Oh, so that's real cute. Look at that. <laughs> uh, iodine. That's cool. Oh, wow. That's nice. Do we need to do the whole toe or just... That should be good, right? Now, we need to numb the toe with a local anesthetic. We'll have to inject the anesthetic in several locations There's around so many the needles toe. in here. I guess, you know, you don't really want people cutting into you without numb without being numb <laughs> without numb <laughs> what so yeah that would yeah that hurt probably more than just getting stabbed in the needle once or twice oh i clicked on the wait click where indicated oh right here Ooh, right in the infected area bet that felt real good and right here Great. Now we'll wait a few minutes for the toe to get numb. Good idea. Ah, uh, yes, the five minutes music. And my excellent dancing. Name a more iconic now duo. Now that our patient's toe is numb, place the special tourniquet around the toe. This a tourniquet? This will reduce the amount of blood a coming from the tourniquet. wound. tourniquet! Once you've done that, we can move on. Oh, I keep interrupting this guy. I'm so sorry! First, carefully slide one blade of the nail anvil the under anvil? the affected nail. Ew. We're going to go down the nail until we <coughs> feel a little bit of resistance. Our patient's going to feel some pressure as we cut away the ingrown nail. <laughs> Starting to wonder. Oh! oh no! <laughs> Great. Take the forceps and carefully remove the ingrown nail. Oh, that little stringies. Kind of Ew. Let's clean up that blood. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> See that small Oh, bit I've got like tears in my right eyes. There? It looks like the patient has a bit of infection in the toe. Yeah, no kidding. Firmly squeeze the edge of the toe to get as much of that infection out as you can. Ooh, this is worse than the eye surgery. <laughs> that toe is starting to look much better, but we're not done yet. Next, we're going to apply some phenyl acid to the wound. Okay. This will help apply ensure that the problem of ingrowth will not reoccur in this toe. When you're done inserting the acid, <laughs> I'll remove the tourniquet <laughs> and we'll finish up. 
I didn't get to do that. Finish by applying some antibiotic ointment on a sterile gauze pad. <laughs> it's his own stuff. Like, this man's is a surgery. A, sur a surgery. <laughs> this dude's is a surgeon. Place it against the and he's creating and stuff. And wrap it in a gauze bandage. Yeah, good luck walking Fantastic around, my man. job. Since there was some obvious infection, our patient will be sent home with a prescription for some antibiotics. Good idea. We'll also need to tell our patient to keep the wound dry. Obviously. Clean the wound regularly and replace the bandage two to three times a day. Of course, of course, of course. While our patient's toenail isn't likely to regrow, his condition is likely to return if he doesn't take care of his feet. This includes wearing proper fitting shoes, properly trimming his toenails, and keeping his feet clean and dry. And that's how we remove an ingrown toenail. You did a great job today. While you're here, try your hand at one of our other surgeries here at <sighs> SurgerySquad.com. Man, these surgery people, they just don't mess around. No sugar coating here. You get the blood, you get the infection, you get all of it. Oh, boy. By the way, I think I'm getting a cold. So if I sound a little stuffed up and sniffly, it's probably because I am. Rhinoplasty! This looks exciting already. Clearly trained. You're darn straight. I am obviously well trained. It's Welcome Dr. To Susie. Surgery Squad's virtual closed rhinoplasty surgery. I'm Dr. Susie. Closed. Today we will be performing rhinoplasty. There's different types. It's what's commonly referred to as a nose job. In this there cosmetic surgery, our patient is a young lady who's looking to change the shape of her nose. We'll perform a closed rhinoplasty procedure to reshape her nose into something she finds more appealing. All right. Some surgeons will perform this surgery using a local anesthetic and sedation, which makes the patient numb and in a dreamlike state. I prefer to work with a patient under general anesthesia and completely asleep. All right. What we're doing That'll today work. is reshaping the bridge of the nose. Our patient feels See, it's it too wide and doesn't like the here. hump on You're it. fine, girly. The thinning of the nose is called an infracture. I'll bet you can't guess what the widening of the nose is called. X fracture. All right, I'll tell you. Infracture. It's an out fracture. Out. Oh. <laughs> Some patients may also want the tip of, of the nose reshaped. That's called typoplasty. Of course it but is. But as I was saying, Logically. this patient only wants an infracture and some reshaping. Easily done. Wouldn't that make it hard to, to breathe, though, if your nose was more narrow? We need to narrow? open the nostrils as wide as possible. We do this with a retractor. Can you place the retractor in the patient's right nostril? Can I place what? Oh. Now with the nostril <laughs> Oh, wide, man. We'll make an incision that looks like fun. An <laughs> it's like double shape. the size of our nostril. That We're doing what? That will allow us to access the bones and cartilage that make up the nose structure. Okay. I've made the incision. Can you oh, use the you. forceps to remove that portion of the nostril? Here, let me just take your skin. Surgeons must be hypervigilant when doing this portion of the procedure, as it can damage breathing and sense of smell. To reshape the nose, we're going to chip off the dorsal hump with a chisel tool called the osteotome. We place the osteotome at the base of the hump and then carefully tap on it with a small rubber mallet. Here, let me this just pretend you're a sculptor. very gently and takes a careful touch. Chip away the parts that I'll aren't David. I'll position the osteotome <laughs> and you tap the end with the hammer. All right. Oh! Now that the hump is loosened, tearing you need off your to pull bones the bone there. And cartilage out of the nose. I guess it is cartilage. Use the tweezer-like forceps to slip it out of the incision. <laughs> now that Just the bump is out part of her there, skull out of her to smooth the edges nose. on both sides with a rasp. Although a rasp? The space left by the bone we've removed is referred to as an open roof. Yeah. To close I, the open roof, I see why. carefully tap the osteotome along the path that I've marked. <laughs> This breaks the nasal bones so we can reposition them. It Tap breaks the, the bones. Once each time I reposition it on the left and right nostrils. All right. Now, now that, that the bones are broken, I just your take face. my fingers and reposition them for this. to close the open roof. Because we made such perfect breaks, the bones slip right into place and the nose is perfect. Perfect breaks. 
I do so well. A few stitches to close up the incisions, and then we place nasal airway splints in oh, her each poor nostril face is so to hold bruised. things in place. Stair oh. strips go across the nose, and an external nasal splint is added to hold everything tight. Our patient will have some bruising and minor pain for yeah. a few days. I know we'll remove the splints in about a week. A week? Most okay. of the swelling will be gone by then, but there can be a bit left for a few months. Her poor eyelids look bruised, And there too. we have it. Thanks for coming by. Catch more of my great surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. Thank you, Dr. Susie. Thank you. Okay, that's going to be it for today, now that we've been traumatized by toenail surgery. <laughs> uh. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you enjoyed what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe for more in the future. I'll see y'all later. Bye!